The religious roundtable was a huge success for us Muslims with the Muslims being represented by Daniel Haigaju, Jake the Muslim metaphysician. The Christian side was being represented by career Islamophobes, Robert Spencer and Brother Rashid. A key point to address... The One, there's faith, meaning none of us have gone to heaven to see what heaven's going to look like. We're all taking a risk. All of us here are taking a risk. Uh, either we're all going to be right, either we're all going to be wrong, or either one of us is going to be right, meaning one group's going to be right and the other's going to be wrong. But we don't know. That's faith. That's prayer. No, we are, all of us are not taking a risk. The doctrine of Islam of Tawheed, where we believe in one God with no partners, without any analogy, that is the most compelling doctrine there is, which exists in no religion, not even Judaism. Judaism, the primary scripture, the that has much polytheistic elements in it. For example, Moses is prescribed by God as God to the Pharaoh, while Aaron is Moses' prophet. The Jewish religion do have polytheistic elements. Islam is the only religion that has the most compelling doctrine. This doctrine has been consistent since its origin. You know, probably the main thing is the sanctification of violence and the idea that God will bless and even calls upon the believers to commit acts of violence under certain circumstances. Like Rashid here is an ex-Muslim, and so under Islamic law, as it's traditionally and classically formulated, he would be put to death. I put on in Texas a Muhammad art exhibit and cartoon contest, and it actually would be also under a death sentence just for drawing Muhammad. Christians brought very, very generic arguments against Islam, that Islam is boiler, that it has blasphemy laws and apostasy laws, which have not been abrogated by the Muslim scholars. Another fact of the matter is, in regards to the blasphemy laws and the apostasy laws, Brother Jake handled this extremely well, that such apostasy laws and blasphemy laws exist in the Old Testament as well. And since Jesus' deity, a three-in-one deity, whatever that is, he, so he did ordain the massacre of Amalekites, the genocide and you know of women and children, innocent civilians and the mass rape and you know that incest he condoned those all those cases of incest and rape that are overlooked by God. You know, like Samson and Delilah, like Judas. You know, so God overlooked that and consequently uh, condoned that. So Jesus did condone those kinds of violent actions and immoral actions. And even in the New Testament, New Testament, uh, Brother Rashid made the point that in the New Testament, Jesus didn't kill any apostate. The thing is, Judah, uh, Judas, in the New Testament, there are two stories in the Bible. One is that he hanged himself. The second is he says just burst out. So in one narration in the Bible, Jesus as deity, as part of the three in one triune God, did kill and did punish and kill the apostate Judas. The Bible is very, very violent. Islam has very, very clear ordainment by God and by Prophet Muhammad that we are not, for example, in a warfare situation, we are not allowed to kill innocent, non-combatant people. And we are not allowed to cut trees, we are not allowed to abuse animals in, war, in warfare situations. Contrast that with the Bible, where there are examples in the Old Testament especially, and in the New Testament as well. Slavery exists in the Bible. Uh, Moses and the Jewish people decimated Amalekites and Canaanites and all those Gentiles. The differences in our doctrines, the doctrine of Christianity, the Trinity, as pointed out by Jake, developed over the over three to four hundred years. It did not exist before the Kaiwia declared Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit to be three in one triune God, which does not make any sense. Hence, making it uh, us that with the of Tawhid, Islam had this since its uh, origin. There is no deity except Allah, but He has no partners. He is without any analogy. That the opposing side was from a very secular, atheistic perspective rather than a more traditional Christian perspective, which is a testimony to the destruction of the Christian religion. The last thing to mention is Robert Spencer's racism. As Haigaju points out, he is a racist. He, his site and his YouTube channel, Jihad Watch, 
Uh, any time a Middle Easterner will commit a crime, he will report it. So Brother Rashid, the moron was just crying the whole time, so there's nothing more to discuss. The only thing that uh, I suppose is worthwhile is that he said that Islam conquered Morocco and Cairo and uh, Europe and attacked her and waged war or whatever nonsense he was talking about. The thing is, as Daniel pointed out in the debate, the things that he's, uh, the values that Brother Rashid and Robert Spencer are defending are not Christian values, they are more secular values. And those secular values have caused the decimation, massacre of Iraq, of Afghanistan, of Vietnam, Hiroshima, of now Palestine. These secular values have caused massacres, mass refugees, mass rapes. Nowhere in Islamic history did this occur. So this, that's the only worthwhile thing to discuss, otherwise the moral was just trying all the time.